In this tutorial, I will create a poster design for a surf competition in Adobe InDesign. This exercise is for beginners. The practice files for this exercise can be found in the description below. Be sure to check out part two of this video where I prep this file for print. Here's an example of what we will create today. Before we get started, I wanted to show you some of my inspiration behind this poster design. I love to use Pinterest to gather design ideas into one board. So I began my research by looking up surf posters and surf competition posters on Pinterest. And I found lots of amazing ideas here. Two posters that I really loved and that really stood out to me. I love the stacked typography here that's all different sizes, but it all fits nicely in this, this rectangular shape. So I thought I might try something like this in my poster today. And another poster that I loved, I like this composition a lot and these colors. So I did want to consider doing something like this in my design. Okay, let's head over to InDesign to get started on our poster. So we're going to create a brand new document. Go to File, New, Document. I'm going to select the print preset. And the poster we're designing is going to be tabloid size, so 11 by 17. I'm going to select this preset. And then on the right, you can see all the information about this preset. You can see the width, the height, the orientation. We need to turn facing pages off. I'm just going to go ahead and click Create. So let's go ahead and save our document. Go to File, Save, and save this on your computer. Next, let's make sure we're all looking at the same things around our artboard. So let's reset our workspace. Go to Window, Workspace. I like to use the Typography Workspace. So now you should see the same things around your artboard as you see on my screen. So let's set up some columns and a grid for our design. A grid is always a great place to start with design. It helps guide you about where to put elements of your piece. So go to Layout, Margins, and Columns. We're going to keep our half inch margins, but I do want to set up four columns. So in the Columns space, select four, and you can see that they appeared here behind this dialog box. And I'm also going to increase the gutter to a quarter inch. Click OK. So you should now see your margins and the columns that we set up in your artboard. If for some reason you don't see these columns and the grid yet, you can go to View, Grids and Guides, and there should be an option to either Hide Guides or View Guides here. So you can choose to view the guides. There's also a keyboard shortcut that I use frequently. It's Command colon, and you can turn the guides on and off. First thing, let's add a photo to our artboard. I'm going to use the rectangle frame tool in my toolbar on the left. It's about halfway down. You can also just use the rectangle tool. These do about the same thing. And with this tool, I'm going to click on my artboard and start on one of the margins that I see. And I'm going to click and drag and make a square. Now let's put an image inside this square. Go to File, Place, and I'm navigating to the practice files for this exercise. The image we're going to place first, it's called Pexels Cameron with some numbers behind it. So click open. Okay, we now have an image in our box. The surfer and the wave are really small right now and I want them to be larger. I have the selection tool activated. When I just hover over this image, you see this circle appears. If I click on the circle, I can now see this golden line appear around the edges of the image. So I'm going to click shift and hold shift and just drag your mouse and that adjusts the size of the image. And you can also move it around inside this art box. So same thing, hold shift, and I'm going to increase the size more and move it over. Next, we're going to add type to the top of the poster. So I'm going to move my image down just a little bit so we have extra space up here. And let's select the type tool. It's on the left hand toolbar. We're just going to click and drag using the type tool to make a text box. This poster is going to say Pipe Masters International Surf Competition, August 12th through the 16th in Oahu, Hawaii. I'm just going to type out Pipe Masters. So double click the text and it will select your text and find the character panel on the right hand side of your screen. You can also find character panel in window type and tables, character. I have installed an Adobe font on my machine called Cheddar Gothic Rough. So that is what we're gonna use for the poster headline. So I changed my font here, and now let's adjust the size of the font. 
And I want this font to pretty much fill up the top of my poster and be really large. All right, I'm gonna scoot it over a little bit. The placement of that feels right and the size feels like it works for the scale of the poster. Now let's draw a second text box. Go back to your type tool, click and drag, make another text box. This time let's type International Surf Competition. Let's change the font. So let's choose um, sans serif font. I'm using Avenir. And I actually want this text to be all caps. So in your character panel, you can click on the hamburger menu and select all caps. Let's make this text really big. And I'm gonna move my image down just a hair. And let's do a hard return after surf. So I increased the size of this type to be pretty large. Now surf competition feels like it's aligning on the right and left. The word international is not. I'm going to make international even larger. So I'm going to just double click that individual word and increase the size so it also aligns right and left. You can also adjust the tracking and I'm also going to adjust the letting and just reduce that letting just a hair. So let's look at this without the guides. I'm gonna use command colon. And I'm still seeing my text boxes here. I don't really like that. I want to see this completely clean. So one way you can do that is to go to view, extras, hide frame edges, and it will get rid of all the frame edges in your design. So next, let's add one more text box. We need to put some more information about this event on the poster. Use the text tool again. And I'm actually gonna put this text directly on top of the photo. So the competition is taking place August, 12th through 16th in Oahu, Hawaii. I don't know if I'm saying that right. I've never been there. And let's make this font the same as the font above it. Avenir is what I'm using. Let's also make this all caps. Click that hamburger menu, select all caps. Next, let's add some more color to this design. When I used the type tool initially, it just selected black text. I see some really nice color in this photo that I actually want to pull out and use for my type color. We are going to draw a rectangle. So choose a rectangle over here and off of your artboard, just draw a little square. And I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit more. And we're going to use a tool called the eyedropper tool. It's in the left toolbar. So with that box selected, click the eyedropper tool. I'm gonna to click on a dark blue color. It filled my square with the blue that I just selected from the image. So I'm actually gonna add this color to what's called swatches. So let's open our swatches panel. You can find it on the right hand side of your screen by clicking swatches. You can also get to it by going to window color swatches. When I open my swatches panel on the right, you can see I still have my little square activated. It is showing me that color in my swatches panel. You can see these little squares right here are showing me my active swatches. And here's that blue. So I want to save this blue so we can apply it to our type. So go ahead and just click that little swatch color and you can click and drag it down and it places it in your swatches panel. So next step, go ahead and select the text we have so far and make it our new swatch color. I'm also going to play with the color of this type. I don't think this needs to be dark. I wanna play with maybe it being white. So I selected that text and selected paper in the swatches panel. Paper is essentially the color of your paper. So in this case, we're using white paper and that's why the swatch is called paper. Okay, so we definitely need more color in this design. I like to use the color wheel to give me ideas on what colors to add to make this pop. On a color wheel, you want to find whatever is opposite of the color in your design, which in this case is orange, that is a complementary color. So we are going to add a complementary color to this design. So now we want to add an orange swatch to our design. So to add a new swatch, go to window color and you'll see this little color box pop up. We are going to just use this color picker and I am looking for kind of a red orange. And you'll see when I selected the color from this rainbow, it appears here. It shows me the color codes of that color. And it also, I have my swatches panel open. It also appears in my swatches. And we want to save this swatch to be able to apply it to our design. So just like we added the swatch earlier, in the swatches panel, click on our color and click and drag it into your swatches panel. So let's add our new color to this design. I'm going to select the rectangle tool. From the edge of the poster, let's click and drag a rectangle from edge to edge. 
and fill it with our color swatch. Obviously this rectangle is on top of our photo and that's not what I want. So I'm going to right click it, say arrange, send to back. You can also find send to back by going up to object, arrange, send to back. We need to add some more details about this event. And we also need to add a logo to this design. Go to file, place. I'm going to use Surf Hawaii logo white. Click open. That image is now attached to my cursor. So I'm actually going to click and just drag a little box and it placed that logo inside the box. Using my selection tool, I'm just gonna move the logo down. Let me turn my guides back on. And again, that's command colon. You can turn them on and off. I want my logo to appear in this far right column. So I'm gonna zoom way in here. This logo is currently way too big and I can adjust the size of this logo by clicking it. And then in the, my top toolbar, you see this 100%. This shows you the size and the proportions of this logo. And it also has this little link icon activated. So I'm just gonna click down, down, down on the 100% and that makes my image smaller. I'm just going to center it kind of in this right column and we need to add more details about our event. I'm going to put them right here. So let's go back to our text tool and I'm going to start at my left margin and I'm going to just span about three columns this time. So if you right click, there's an option to fill with placeholder text. So let's select that and it just puts a paragraph of lorem ipsum in that text box for you. Let's adjust the font and the size. So I'm going to use the same font as before, Avenir book. And and this is considered body copy. I often don't like to go really above 12 point in body copy. I'm going to bump it up just a little bit so you can see it better on our poster. And I'm also going to make this text white. So select it all, go back to your swatches panel and select paper. So I want a couple lines of body copy. So you can delete some of this. I want to also add a CTA at the bottom. Inside that same text box, I'm just going to type register at surfhawaii.com. So we have our CTA, but we need it to stand out more. So back to our character panel, I'm going to make this a more bold font weight. So I'm going to select black. So I'm going to make this text quite large. Okay. So now that we have most of our design elements in here, I'm just going to zoom out and evaluate everything so far. Turn my guides off. So this is looking pretty nice. One last step that I wanted to try in my inspiration, I really liked this gradient that I saw in this poster design. So instead of just having the orange, which I think the orange works, but the gradient would probably be really cool. So there is a tool called the gradient tool in InDesign. You can also find it in the toolbar on the left. So how this gradient tool works, I have my swatches panel open and I just clicked and dragged that swatches box away. So it's going to be freestanding here. And then I open my gradient panel. You have to have the colors that you want in your gradient already in your swatches panel. So if you don't have the colors that you need, you might need to go create a new color swatch and add all the colors here that you want to add to your gradient. You just click into a swatch and drag it up into this little line at the bottom of the gradient. Gradient tool. I'm going to add three colors for now. They kind of resemble a sunset and you can reorder them. So I want my pink, orange, and my yellow. I don't really want the black and the white. That was kind of there as a preset. Just click on these extra colors and pull them out. And I'm having trouble with this white one. I'm going to see if I can like override it just by clicking and hovering on top of it. I just clicked and dragged that pink right on top of that white and that seems to have fixed it. And now you can adjust the placement of these to adjust the gradient. I want this to look like a sunset. The colors actually need to go like top to bottom. So let's change the angle of our gradient, 90 degree angle. You can also add this gradient to some text. So you can select text, go to the gradient tool and do the same thing. And I'm just going to apply that same gradient that I did here, apply it to my text. And I think this is looking really cool. The last thing that I want to do to this design, I have this white area at the top. I would like to add a little bit of texture to this. I'm going to add an image behind here. I'm going to use a really light colored image. I have an image in this group from Johans Anderson from Unsplash. And actually what I want in this image is this white color in the water. So I'm going to zoom way out and I'm going to, I'm going to hold down shift and just make this part of the image much bigger. And now I need to move this image to the back. So right click, arrange, send it back. So now this poster is pretty much finished. 
I want to turn my guides off just to make sure I'm looking at my poster without any distractions. The last step is to make sure to save your work. So file, save. And I always like to export and look at my design in PDF view. I think seeing it in a PDF in a different window helps you see things that maybe you didn't see before. So go to file, export, Right now I'm just looking at this on my computer screen, so I'm gonna choose Adobe PDF Interactive, click Save. And if you have Adobe Acrobat installed, it should auto open your PDF in Adobe Acrobat so you can see it. So that's how you design a poster in Adobe InDesign. Be sure to check out part two of this tutorial where I set this file up for print. Subscribe to Cry Studio for more graphic design tutorials. Thanks so much.